Anyway, going back to the whole Cassie and Diddy thing, um, people have not been happy with Joe Budden's response to the whole Cassie and Diddy thing. Because if you're not aware, Joe Budden and Diddy are friends, which is odd because they're not really friends, really, if you think about it. I think the whole Diddy and Joe Budden relationship is something that I remember Mole saying when the breakup happened, Mole made a little flipping remark like, this guy, Joe, no, no, I think he was talking about Joe Budden. Basically, he was saying that, oh, he thinks all these guys are cool with him because they like him, but it's not. It's because he's got a popping platform. When he was a failing rapper and musician and artist, none of these guys cared for him, but now he's got one of the biggest, if not the biggest, you know, hip hop based or urban based podcasts out there. That's why everyone wants to be his friend. And I think that also was at the time when they were kind of going through their drama, of course. But obviously before that, when they weren't going through drama, Diddy was the first person to kind of give them a big check, I think, right? To like recognize Joe's, you know, com yeah, contribution to the urban media space, whatever it may be. So he got to deal with Revolt. And then if I'm not mistaken, um, that's when Joe did that show. I forgot what the, the show was, but Joe did a couple of shows on the revolt um, and obviously got a check from Diddy. So in that case, he's now become Diddy loyalist. Which is, like I said, which is odd because they don't really have a relationship before that. They kind of became professional friends. And then since then, he decided to be the Diddy apologist or just turn a blind eye to all the fuck shit. The problem is with Joe is this. Joe's podcast is about talking about fuck shit. He talks about everybody's fuck shit in great detail. So when he then turns around and refuses to really get honest about Diddy's accusations or allegations around him, especially when it came to the Mace stuff, when Mace was going through these issues with Diddy in terms of not getting his royalties or feeling like he was, you know, scammed or, you know, whatever it may be with the deal with Bad Boy and whatnot. And, you know, we all know Joe Budden's history with record labels and how he felt shafted. People are looking at it thinking, hold on, you went through all that shit and now someone else is going through that even worse and, you know, someone that you know, but you're not willing to call it out because of your bias, your friendship. And now this issue happens where he's going to accuse of fucking rape and now you don't want to talk about it, but you're willing to talk about fucking Megan Thee Stallion and Tory ad nauseum, right? But now you don't want to talk about Diddy. People are basically calling out his hypocrisy. So D Joe decided to respond to the, you know, the, the, the chatter online, people demanding or requesting he respond to this Diddy and Cassie thing. And he then, in part, decided just to comment on the whole thing in general. But he did a whole Joe Biden thing where he put the fucking response behind a paywall. So because he, he does this often now, whenever people are baying for his blood or want him to respond to something, that the Drake's a big evolutionary commission. Appreciate you, brother. Been on any private jets to <laughs> islands, Augustino? No comment, illusionary commission. No comment. No comment. No comment. Okay. I'm a poor working class um, black immigrant from an undisclosed location in Africa. I will, you know, hey, I have to do what I have to do to feed my family. I have four kids, a dog and a cat, and then, you know, and then incapacitated parents and shit. They need money. They need Gucci. They need Dolce Gabbana, right? They need Louis. So I had to do what I had to do, but no comment. No comment. Big up, Lucian Commission. Appreciate you. Um, so anyway, Diddy, sorry, um, Joan had responded on the Joe Biden podcast. He did a really scummy thing by putting his response behind a paywall, um, which just comes across very distasteful. You know how it is. Um, and he then decided to dance for six minutes around the entire topic. And so did some of his co-hosts. So let's see um, Joe Biden's response on the Joe Biden podcast regarding the Cassie and Diddy civil case and what he had to say. But it's kind of disappointing because I've seen some clips of it already. And yeah, it's not going to be a good one. Let's see how he dances and tap dances around this. Well, you got to take my word. Yeah. I think. Mm. All right, so nobody's ready to say it. All right, mm -hmm. come on, move on. Nah, I'm with you. We got it. All of this shit is fucked up there. Yeah, oh. it sounds like. All this shit's fucked up there. Let's go. Bro, you guys have got a podcast where this guy's, this podcast especially, is a proper, proper, proper gossipy platform where they talk about all sorts of shade room adjacent topics now because it's diddy they all of a sudden oh this is really bad i just pray for peace i pray for healing no nah, bruv one of the biggest prominent people in hip-hop is accused of rape by one of his longest serving fucking girlfriends concubines whatever she was kind of deemed as and you don't want to talk about it it's like a toxic situation yep. in general That's oh shut up park <laughs> fucking hate parks as well parks can go jump off the nearest building he's such a fucking joe apologist ish and i was discussing that 
people have been calling our phones that don't watch podcasts. I ain't, I don't think niggas even watch podcasts. Niggas blowing my phone up. Yo, y'all niggas better keep it real yeah. on Diddy. Don't <laughs> let Joe be skating by. Yeah. I'm like, yo, fam. somebody. At put, least they let y'all. The niggas are telling me, yo, what Joe gonna say? I said, nigga, ask Joe. I hate this faux. I hate this um. This fake disbelief thing they do as a defense mechanism. I don't know what you guys are talking about. Why are you guys so? Why are you guys on me for? You're you're a podcast that's known for giving it up. Joe constantly puts these guys on notice. I say, don't give it up enough. He's gonna fucking replace them. They have to be crazy detailed, crazy authentic, crazy real about all the subjects you talk about. You can't tap dance. Right, you can't put your cape on. You have to give it up, as they say. Give it up. But here they are acting as if they don't understand why everyone's kind of on their nuts about it. Why are you asking me what Joe gonna say? Or tune in. Yeah. Fuck. Yo, are y'all <laughs> stupid? Like, let's have a moment. No, nah, for real. Damn. Turn up. Y'all gonna make me take you fucking shit. Turn up in your Travis Scott cool. while this is Travis Scott. Trying to respect the gospel, clean version of this podcast. By the way, I fucking hate Jordan One Lowe's. I don't care if they're Travis Scott's. I don't care anything. I think Jordan 1 Lowe's looks so bad. I fucking hate the shape. I hate how the laces are spaced out that way. They just look terrible. If you're going to wear Jordan 1 Lowe's, just buy Dunks or buy Air Force Ones. But I hate the shape of Jordan 1 Lowe's. They look like a poor man's Jordan High. Jordan 1 should always be in the high. If you don't have a high, you, they don't exist. And only girls should wear mids. No guy should wear a Jordan 1 mid. If you're a guy and you wear a Jordan 1 mid, you probably have your mum cut your steak up into little squares before you eat it, right? You should never wear Jordan 1 mids if you're a dude. Only women can wear Jordan 1 mids. And if you're a dude, only wear Jordan 1 highs. Don't wear lows. I don't care if they're Travis Scott's. They're fucking horrible. But I be wondering this too at home. The fans echo some of that stupid shit. Do you Calling your fans stupid, great. Y'all think podcasters are coming into work to say that domestic violence, rape, sex trafficking and drugging women is right on some i love how they do this type of thing it's almost like a gaslighting thing where you go to the most extreme end no one is saying you weren't saying it's right but you're a podcast where you try and give it up where you offer your unfiltered opinion on hip-hop topics it's not without reason or outside a realm of reason to expect to expect or appreciate you to say that as well maybe who knows some fronts Mm. Like, did y'all need? Do y'all need anybody to say that all of those things are horrifically mortifying? No, they are horrifically mortifying, but they're even more so horrifically mortifying when it's somebody that's a very prominent figure in hip hop who's been accused of it. People get accused of rape and abuse every day, but when it's somebody prominent like a Diddy, why do you have to spell this out? You know what the deal is. Come on, don't play games. Y'all didn't need Joe Budden for that, right? Y'all don't even want me for a music review. Oh, here we go. Victim. So I know that I'm not now he's now he's playing the fucking victim. This guy, bro. He's a master manipulator, isn't it? Master manipulator, master fucking um, you know, what's that thing called? Avoider of accountability. He can tap dance like the best of them. He is the gaslight Wayne Gretzky. Big up Danny from the stop. Not now the 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 right the harbinger, <laughs> harbinger yeah. of truth oh come on mel shut the fuck up you probably mel i love her but she was probably she probably knows about those freak parties too mel is acting brand new but mel was a video victim from the 90s and from the early 2000s she probably heard a lot of stories about diddy's parties did she go who knows but come on mel now nah, you know what really what, morality since, since we're here what really is, is like what you said for carisha to the to the podium like why y'all yeah you have you have a relationship with puff you're known to skirt certain things when it comes to puff but that's the reason exactly that's why they're saying it don't get me wrong the carisha stuff is a bit out of the way it's a bit too much young miami stuff but people are calling out because she's been on record to be a bit of a diddy apologist right she goes out of her way to defend nonsense that he's been accused of or look the other way or act like it's not me though personally i don't think you should ask people like a carisha in questions about diddy i think those type of girls their moral compass isn't the same as us regular people. She might give you an answer that you don't want to hear. It might make you feel really bad. It might make you feel uncomfortable and it might really fuck with your head because, you know, she's from the fucking, you know, she's from the trap. So a girl like that probably will have a very un -PC opinion about it. She might say, it's not me though. It couldn't be me though. 
I'm not some fucking bum ass bitch. Like, I can't. like she might come out with some very toxic shit. So I think people should leave Carisha, aka Young Miami, alone because she might have an answer that you don't want to hear. <laughs> but nigga, it's people that signed the pup that got a podcast. So if you want somebody to talk about pub and you think somebody going to pull punches or not say nothing, go talk to them first. That's not that. No. Th- why would we do that? Why would we go and talk to people who are signed to his network to get an unfiltered opinion? You fucking donkey. Ice is a real dummy, isn't it? Of course we're going to come to you guys because you're meant to be independent. You're meant to be the kings of giving it up. So we're going to, especially Ice, unofficially, uh, officially, unofficially, whatever his fucking name is on Twitter, he was known for being the fucking hot take McGee guy, right? He'd get on there and give you your unfiltered, um, you know, uh, fucking, you know, a hot take that you didn't ask for in the middle of the morning, middle of the day, middle of the night. And all of a sudden, I don't know why we're here. I don't know why you want us to say something. See, because I'm going to add to that, though. That's what I don't like. Because that's my thing, right? Like, for as much praise as I give Hove and a Puff and a Dame and just for all of the praise, right? Again, back to podcasters keeping some of their thoughts private and just, like, not having to share everything. I don't feel... Nah, 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 nah. These, These guys talk about every fucking nonsense on the fucking shade room, yet they want to now have, like, a principled moral stance on things. We have to keep some things private. Shut up, bro. Shut up. I feel like I need to come in here and have word vomit about my discernment oh, when it comes to some of the evil oh. shit that goes on in the industry. <laughs> Nor do I think I'm the mascot and spokesperson to be the deliverer of news for some of the evil shit that goes on in the industry or something. So you're not going to call out the evil. It's just exist there. You're just going to turn a blind eye and pretend it doesn't happen. Cool, 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 cool. The treacherous, some of the things that are not ma- uh, made not so public, right? Like, I don't think the public would react well if they knew all of the locker room behavior of football players. Oh my God. We're getting into about a bit of what about isms, right? Oh, <laughs> this guy's, you can, you can tell he talks to a lot of like those bird headed women a lot day to day because he's avoiding accountability. Like some of these fucking, you know, big bum, big boon ladies that he seems to like a lot. He's avoiding accountability very well here. I don't. Oh, shit. Sure. That's poor, man. But there's they, some wild shit in the music business. Mm. But we, we're not talking about that. We're talking about Diddy. Diddy's been accused of fucking rape from somebody that was very close to him and somebody who people would think would be credible. She has not said anything beforehand. She came out with a lawsuit. It went straight to court. It got fucking settled out of court in record time. Most likely he did that shit. If you can, if you put stories and things together from all the years of accusations and whatever it may be, that saying smoke, there's no smoke without fire definitely applies to him. And then we're all turning a blind eye. Come on. I came in here with Skane, Webb, and Nitty. Those are the three people that you can tie to me. I have been without a cosign. I have been without the backing. I have been without What's all this, of the what tricks, is this? treats, what and is this? perks that come along with having the powerful people behind you now, pushing what is this? you. What, what Why you do y'all here? think that is? Like, I show up, do the gig, <laughs> go. When shit start getting weird... When it start looking like an orgy's around the corner, when it start looking like the, the, the Molly Fest is going on, when it start looking like the doofy people shit, I'm not talking about Puff. L.A. is L.A. still. What is he talking about? Wasn't he a dusthead for a long period of time? Oh, yeah, by the way, talking about Crystal Meth, Joe is a, Joe is a well-documented and self-admitted, you know, he used to be on Crystal Meth a lot. So, again, my, my, my discernment when it comes to meth thing, I've been really, my head's been in the sand. I was thinking everybody was on the same drugs I was on. I guess people. I guess meth has been around for time. It's been a thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Check like New York's on. New York, <laughs> and New York's New York, but LA is different. Yeah, true. Mm-hmm. That's true. LA is LA is different. That gets into Hollywood. That gets into it's very belly of the into beast. the 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 Holly plant. That gets into the Holly plant being used for spells and rituals. It, it just gets deep. It's weird over there. It's a weird energy over there. Mm-hmm. But whatever. What I, I say that to say, born alone, die alone with me. Don't put none of these niggas' weird kinks on me. Don't put them on my... That's not a kink, brother. It's called rape. You're, you're calling rape a kink. <laughs> Sexual abuse is a kink. 
Cool. My jacket and don't think that I'm the publicist for none of it. I am not because I come in here and do a podcast twice a week. This ain't going to go like that. You want to ask me about something? Ask me about my mom, my dad. My we tried to ask you about Drake. You didn't want to talk about Drake. We want to ask you about Diddy. Want to talk. So what, did, what are you going to talk about then? What are you going to talk about? Nicki Minaj. Cardi B again. Megan Thee Stallion Vittori. Come on, bro. My kids and shit that I know a little bit about. I don't give a fuck who, what none of these people is doing outside of this. Oh, I'm here for the music. I say it Joe. repeatedly. No, they don't even talk about music. That's the problem. This podcast was actually great when Rory and Moore were on there because they'll call each other out on their shit. It was actually good when Rory and Moore were on there too because they actually spoke about music. And I've seen clips of this new lineup where Joe gets annoyed when they start talking to in detail about music. You'll say, oh, that's boring, let's move on. You're losing listeners. Like, he actually doesn't like the, the, the music talk. He actually makes them have little conflicts or he gets on his content on the over everything thing and content over everything wave starts screaming and shouting. They don't actually talk about music. If they spoke about music, this pod would be fucking incredible. It would be back to its regular, you know, how it was in the past with Rory and Moore and those guys and whatnot. So now going back to the, we talk about music thing. Come on, bro. Not the people. Mm. None of the people. Mm. But if you kick other people's back in and then somebody that you're familiar with, you you don't have the same energy, they're exactly. going to question you. Exactly. Oh, please, question away. What'd that do? To exactly. But he didn't answer the question. See how he didn't answer the question? If you do kick someone's back in, why don't you want to kick him to... Come on. Me. My thing is that What's everybody that do, do that. What does that do? Same thing with me. I'm question everybody away. do it. Question away. <laughs> everybody does I mean, it. I do. You're allowed to get caught. This is the thing I don't understand people like this. If you don't want to comment on something because it's your friend... That's fine. Just say, this is my friend. I don't want to comment on it. I don't want to comment on it because this is my friend. But then don't get annoyed when people get annoyed that you don't want to comment on something because it's your friend. But then when it's not your friend, you go crazy hard. Because these aren't nuanced people. These aren't balanced people. These are people who go all the way in on people they don't know. But then when there's someone they do know, hey, I can't talk about this, man. This is a bit too crazy. I can't go into detail. Do -do -do -do. It's like, no, just be, if you're nuanced and in the middle and fair, no one will call you out on your shit. But when you go super hard on people that you don't know, and then you completely turn a blind eye and suddenly act like you got fucking, you know, amnesia or that you can't see and stuff or that you don't read the internet when someone that you do like, that's when people are going to call out your shit. Do it, but I can admit it. When it comes to my niggas, I ain't talking about them. Exactly. I'm sorry. That's there just we me. go. Suck my dick. And, and also, your friend's being accused of scamming. If your friend gets accused of rape, I think if you're a media figure and people ask you for your opinion, you shouldn't be annoyed that they're asking you about your opinion if it's a fucking rape accusation. And you as a friend also, you have to look yourself in the mirror if you're going to be still be friends with somebody who gets accused and is most likely guilty of rape. You have to be a real sick individual to still be friends with somebody like that, even if they got money. Surely there's other friends that you can have to replace them with. You don't need to have friends that have been like, I, I don't know, as a, as a dude, I don't have, again, like I said, I could forgive murder before I could forgive rape because you could murder somebody from, for revenge, to avenge your fucking sibling passing away, God forbid, or somebody, a member of family or something. You could easily forgive that. But fucking rape, how can you forgive that? How can that be explainable? How can that be justifiable? Really? Come on. They got homies that's doing wild shit that they're not talking about, that they don't say nothing about. That's, That's just me. Yeah, I, I would, but I can admit that sometimes when you, All this shit you, have, you I, I admit it, dog. Six, I do. Un, I, I do understand the frustration. Sixty of the music industry is foul. No, but you can't oh talk your shit. That's sixty percent of the music awful. industry is foul beyond belief. Joe's sixty. Joe's I'm being nice. Yeah, that's conservative. I'm being nice. No, I think that's about accurate. Because there's a lot of shut up, Parks. Have your own opinion. So piggybacking off your fucking boss, Joe. Honestly, I fucking hate Parks. You know why? Not because of him, but because he reminds me of so many fucking do-gooders at work. Have you ever to the type of people? The ones that are like, yeah, the boss is right. What she said is right, actually. Yeah, we don't actually need a break. We can actually work longer hours. Yeah, you know what? I don't actually mind coming in on our off days. It's okay. Yeah, don't worry. I could, I could come in. I don't mind doing the sales stuff. I don't mind helping packing up. I don't mind cleaning. You know the type of dudes that just eager to fucking please and, you know, slob on a knob of the boss. I hate, it's not even him, it's just his personality. He reminds me so much of those fucking do-gooders, those fucking randles, those lick arses. Uh, hey boss, I brought you a coffee, I got you an apple, I got an extra pie because I know you like pies.
Fuck you. Major. A lot of good. Yeah, there's a lot of major independent people. There are people that have majors that are good people and shit. Yeah, but miss me with taking your uh, fan conspiracy theories and think that I'm going to fucking question about the like but all that, all that. No, nigga. Is it because of how society is though? Yes. It, 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 yes. Society is built yes. off of that. Yes. Right. Having power and and using your power no, to get what you want. I'm not even talking about that. But what? You're justifying rape because society's built it. Oh my god. <laughs> what? That's what I'm referring to. But then, but then the people who are without power, they want to hear the 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 grunginess. They want to yeah, hear the dirty shit. shit. They want to hear because the they want to knock people off that, their. Yes. Off. Oh my god. Oh my god. Less of Mel on the fucking pod again on these topics. This is bird brain behavior. How can he be an? How can he be a middle aged bird brain? How can he be a middle aged bird? Birds are usually, you know, it's usually a derogatory way to, you know, describe a, a female under the age of 25 who only thinks about makeup and Louis Vuitton bags. But how can you be middle aged and still be a bird? Do I want to knock people off their perch? He's really successful. So Rook is really tasty, actually. I don't see why people have got a problem with it. So Rook's really nice. I mix a rock with my cornbread. That's why I've got these big yams. That's why my boobs are so full and bouncy. It's because of the Ciroc and the cornbread. The cornbread goes to my legs and the Ciroc goes to my big juicy tits. Look at them bounce. You see these juicy tits bouncing? That's the Ciroc in me. Diddy, put the liquid inside of me, all over me. Cornbread on my hips, cornbread on my bum. So rock in my titties. Let's go. G big juicy fat titties. Video vixen titties. Oh, woo 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 Oh, woo 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 Motorboat these titties, baby. Motorboat them. My name is Mel. Video vixen. Ah, ah. Fucking cunts. Yes, a, a peg yes, or yes. two. It's almost know, like, yo, see, we ain't, we didn't want to go do those things. And so that's yeah. why we don't have it. Because yeah. I wasn't willing to sell my soul and do, 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 yeah, do like stupid that. old school. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, to be clear, some people need to be knocked off that pedestal. But mm -hmm, some people mm -hmm, are just, mm -hmm. oh, shut up, fucking Parks. You do good. Or shut the fuck up. Some people do. Do some good work. Do. Some people do. do, do, do. But you know what? In society, when Joe, Joe, if you need your cock to be clean, my mouth is right here. You get away and are with also so human. Yes. When, when you get away with something, you tend to do it again and do it on a bigger scale. True. I don't know if it's a year. Look how they're talking about Diddy. Diddy's been accused of rape and they're literally sitting there like fucking PTSD victims. Like as if they are like scared that he might blow up to their cars too. Um, in general, when people do bad stuff, it's bad. And we know it's bad, but we don't have to talk about it because it's bad. And Yeah. Ego thing. I don't know what it is. But no, it's it's money and power only enhances who you actually are, what your character is. Look at your guy next to you, Mel. That's a good example. But look at the turn turn the other way. Turn your video vixen head the other way. Turn your turn your middle-aged bird brain head the other way. That guy next to you is the perfect example of it. Money and power does change who you are. When Joe was broke, he was for the he was for the creator. He was ab about rewriting the power imbalances, about shaking up the industry, right? About empowering creators and shit. And then when his friends asked for accounting, he, he fucking fired them. No accounting for you. You're not a part of the pod. The pod is mine. It's in my name. Go fuck. Fuck yourself. Kick rocks. Scream that fucking chair. He's a classic example of when money changes you. Money changes him. He started wearing fucking shitty Amiri hats and horrible jewelry and even worse clothes than he wears usually right that's what happens when money changes you he starts fucking eating steak and fucking deep fried shrimp every day and now he's got a, a belly that looks like he drinks lean but it's all full of food that's what fucking happens when money changes you if you're a fucking you piece of shit, yes, I do. I if if, if you're if, you're, if, you're, if yes. you are a fucking yes. piece of shit, you're gonna be a bigger, bigger piece, piece of shit yep. with power and money. If you so, are a kind-hearted person and, and you know have upstanding character, Joe's a good then money and power is gonna enhance so that. If, 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 anyway, Joe's a piece of shit. We know the deal. But this video is the best one because this shows the hypocrisy of Joe. So that's Joe now when the Diddy stuff. But look at this video from years ago. From years ago, look at this video, right? When Joe was actually on the grind up and he was willing to give it up as he, as he saw it. Hear the different tone of Joe 
back then. Listen to this version of Joe, because this version of Joe will be disgusted of the version that he is now. Especially on the Puff shit. Again, like I said to Steve Stout, if Puff was still out here practicing some of those same business habits, I would kill him. And let me tell the audience that privately and in confidence, him and I have spoken and he applauds that I come in here and say whatever the fuck I want to say regarding him. That's manipulation, by the way. But hey, we move on. He don't hold me to that. I'm respectful. But I tell the truth. You think he loved what I had to say when that May shit was going on? He didn't. But guess what? It's my job to talk to the people. I don't run and fucking hide when the topic comes. Mm, exit out. I'm going to tell you what I think. And hopefully the people that love me and respect me know that I'm doing my job and it's nothing personal. Nothing good comes from wearing a mirror, right? Who was that fucking um, drill rapper in New York who did a fucking drillage? You know, who who did a fucking, who got who got a lick back on, a, on an op, who bust his gun wearing, I think, Amiri jeans. Nothing happens when you wear Amiri. Mike Amiri should be burned. You know what I mean? Burn all your Mike Amiri because nothing good happens with Mike Amiri. Joe started wearing Mike Amiri and suddenly he started making no sense. If that's it, K-Flock. K-Flock wore fucking Mike Amiri skinny jeans and now he's, you know, one of the most talented rappers of his generations, of his generation, so he's probably going to be in prison for decades. Nothing happens good when you wear Mike Amiri. The end. Rest of you niggas that think my character ever changes around any man, y'all got Joe real fucked up. And I, I've said this before, right? As much as I criticize people like Joe about changing with Diddy and stuff, I've also never been around people of that kind of level of stature and shit. But I can honestly say from here, sitting in my parents' bedroom, or my parents' bedroom, my parents' fucking basement, right? Um, covered in fucking Cheeto dust, that there's not a single human even somebody I look up to, like a James Jebbia, um, like a Nigo, um, like a Hiroshi Fujiwara, like a Tom Ford, like a Rick Owens, you know, um, like th there's not many people that I will legitimately be shaking if I met them in real life. I don't really have that, you know, I don't really get starstruck in that way. And I also wouldn't change my personality or my or the way that i speak about things or my views on stuff because the person i look up to has a different opinion it wouldn't work it's not something that's ever a thing but again i haven't been in their presence so i don't know if it's different because i've never understood people that do this sort of stuff who if somebody is rich and powerful it automatically makes them change their whole view on stuff like they change as a person right their moral compass their moral compass completely disappears they become spineless it's not something I could ever envision myself doing or being. But again, to be fair, I haven't been around people of that influence in real life and felt that and seen the, you know, the, the fucking, you know, the limits of their power or the, or the lack thereof. Maybe it's different when you're around it and stuff. Who knows? I mean, Joe, I'm one of the last it, ones. I'm one of the last that don't. You niggas live in a world of niggas that do that. You know how many men I've seen become somebody else around other men? Y'all want to have an honest conversation? I get offended when y'all talk to niggas such as myself like that. Gaslighting. You know how many of these new modern age men I've seen become somebody else around somebody else? If we're asking how I lose respect for people, that's how. Because I know you, nigga. And who I seen you being in this instance, that instance, that instance, that instance, it just looked different. Y'all don't do that. Now I'm on a rant. You were saying... <laughs> Lastly, on the puff shit, again, like I said to Steve. St okay, so that's Joe's response on things. And obviously, he got called out rightfully. Some young lady on Twitter. Um, no, this is a quote from, from Instagram, but big up Milagro from Mob's Word for, for posting the actual um, screenshot. This young lady said as following. Um, I'll tell you, and this is in response, I guess, to the clip that we just saw of Joe basically tap dancing around the whole subject, right? This clip here. I think it's a response to this clip. So the young lady says as follows. I'll tell you what's idiotic, trying to insult people's intelligence to avoid speaking on a topic. I would respect you if you had the balls to stand on your shit and say that you don't want to address certain topics or people because it doesn't benefit or slash is detrimental to you. Science is complicity. So yes, it needs to be said. Cosby went on national television and bragged about drugging women. No one checked him. To this day, People will say it was a different time and we know exactly what that means. If you were there for the music, you'd give your opinion on Megan's traumatized um, because it's about the music, not the people, right?
if there was no need to speak on rape domestic violence etc and it was just about the music then we would never heard about your opinion on megan and tory if it's just about the music then what was the point of lying on nikki and calling her a cokehead dj envy is not a musician he's more of a peer so there is no was no need for you to, or your opinions on that either right if your podcast was ever really just about music and not for the people or the industry there's a lot we wouldn't have heard from you when you were going at drake people weren't tuning in to hear about the music but you had no problem eating that up right people weren't idiotic then right idiots this woman fucking tore him to pieces really good to see